Can a person believe in evolution and still become a Christian? Well, people can believe a lot of things and be Christians. I think the, the kind of the question is, can these two things coexist? And we, and we talked about this in, in one of the other uh, sessions as well. And I, I think part of the debate, of course, is um, if evolution happened, just as the textbooks say, then there's no such thing as Adam and Eve, all of that thing that kind of, kind of stuff crumbles. And that's why Christians have trouble holding on to it. So there are people who claim to be evangelical Christians like Alistair McGrath and John Polkinghorne and Francis Collins and, and Kenneth Miller and a lot of great thinkers uh, who literally stand up in front of Harvard and do a speech on biology and then grab a guitar and lead worship songs and people come to Jesus who are full on evolutionary thinkers and yet they believe in Jesus and the Bible and whatever because they would say Ch Genesis 1 to 11 is, is probably everything after 11 is pretty historically sound everything before 11 or 12 they would say is is uh, more symbolic stories and whatever and so I think that's the heart behind the question. Where I see the difficulty, so they would argue, let's not let naturalism, which is evolution without God, be hijacked by the secular culture and by schools and whatever. Let's recognize God is the one who guided this process in a beautiful kind of brokenness, but a symmetry that led to humankind and so on and so forth. So, and they would say, you know, look, um, there's, there's existing material that he makes Adam out of. Genesis 2, he takes Adam, he breathes into him, and he becomes a living, thinking being. Ergo, he takes the dust through an evolutionary, because all of it's symbolic and so on and so forth. So they would say that. Um, and I would say there definitely are people who believe that and love Jesus. Um, and th there are challenges um, to that view that archaeologists have pointed out, that biologists have pointed, lots of people have pointed out. Um, and uh, some of them would revolve around specifically when Darwin was writing, of course, he was writing just based on observational science, cracking frogs open and, and looking at things and how they evolved and adapt and all of that and did a bunch of brilliant work. But he didn't have what we have today, which is like DNA. Like we can literally go inside and see that there's a language sketched into every living organism that gives eye color, hair color for your beautiful hair that they're loving. Um, you know, all these things about us are literally in the data, encoded. Where did that come from? A mind had to create that. Matter can't create information without a mind, which is why people who don't believe in God have come up with theories that aliens did it. If you watch the opening 10 minutes of Prometheus, that's the theory. Aliens came and put DNA, they put their mind in it. They created a language, hair color, eye color, whatever, put it into creation. All of these things are because people don't want to believe in God. Darwin said, one of the things that's going to ruin my theory, because you have to have all of these different species and they adapt over time into other species and they cross over species barriers. And the fossil record is going to be the thing, he said, that's going to cast doubt on my theory. Because if you can't find, in the future, if you can't find transitional models in the fossil record, then my whole theory basically falls away. Mm -hmm. And as Stephen Meyer and other people have pointed out, we haven't found those transitional fossils. We haven't found that three-quarter whale, one-quarter horse, whatever, in the, in the fossil record. Mm -hmm. There's fully formed things all the way through. Go look up the Cambrian explosion and so on. There's other complexities about how the eye ever developed. There's all these critiques. One of them is philosophical um, to do with uh, pe people who believe in naturalistic evolutionary theory, believe that everything that you think, everything that you think is encoded there after hundreds of thousands of years of development. And the only decisions you make are the decisions you make to get your seed into the next generation and so on and so forth. Protect your tribe, natural selection, uh, survival of the fittest. So, Everything you believe has been encoded into your brain for that reason. So they say you can't trust your brain about the question of God because you've just created this thing. It's been encoded in your brain. Ergo, it can't be true. And then, of course, philosophers push back and say, well, if that's true, you can't actually then trust your brain about any conclusion, including the conclusion that evolution's true. And so if you're going to doubt the idea of God because you say your brain's encoded through cognitive faculties have been totally messed up after hundreds of thousands of years of development, you can't actually trust your brain about evolution either. You can't actually trust your brain about anything. We don't know if we're brains in a vat right okay. now being poked by aliens. <laughs> Perfect. Anyway, so the <laughs> argument itself cuts, itself cuts off the branch it's sitting on and gets us back to zero. And so the conversation needs to be, be, let's look at the evidence and see what it points to about metaphysical questions, about our origins, meaning, morality, destiny, the existence of God, humankind. Are we 
I think there is some philosophical data about us not being connected to animals in certain ways. Um, there are morals that you have that don't make any sense in the animal kingdom. Um, uh, as I talked about in the other service, a shark, you know, forcibly copulates with another shark. They don't rape a shark. A tiger eats a zebra. He doesn't murder a zebra. So at what point did, we, did that moral change where I can't just kill you to better my own tribe and my life? Where did we get this? Nature never would have given us morals that would tell us that it's wrong for me to oppress and murder for the d- development of myself, that would have had to come from something that transcends nature. Something that transcends nature would have had to say, hey, I know your natural inclination would be like to be this. Most animals don't get married and just stick with one other animal. They just have sex and go. In. So where did you all of a sudden get a moral code that said, well, I can't do that. I shouldn't. Do that. That's not what's good for the flourishing of society. That's not what's good for myself and my spouse and my family. Where did that come from? It had to come from something that transcends nature. So anyway, I think.